Hello everybody, this is Marty McConnell, the Off-Grid Gecko, and today I'm going to be building a terrarium. I'm going to use a pickle jar, a pitch stick, a hatchet, and some stuff that I harvest from the woods. And I'm going to turn this into this. A little self-contained environment in a jar. And we're going to see how long the, the flora and fauna lasts. Got some rocks, got some bugs got all the things hopefully some little eggs in the soil that I collected to make more bugs and spawn a little ecosystem in a glass jar all right so the first thing we need is gravel normally I would go down to the creek bed but raining and we're not doing that crap but this all came from the creek bed so I'm just gonna start tossing some of this in here this is basically gonna provide a space in the bottom for water to be recycled so it can drip down in the bottom there and then I need to grind some charcoal and mash it up and it's raining so everything's soaked but it doesn't matter because I need to put water in the terrarium anyway like that we have charcoals and they don't have to be super finely ground this is not charcoal powder class we're not using it to paint things or for a pigment we're just tossing it in there as a barrier and people recommend putting a little screen in here on top of the charcoal like a window screen but I don't have any that's okay you don't need it So now we have a charcoal layer in there on top of gravel layer that's going to form our substrate most of our substrate the lower layer now we got to find some dirt yeah, so that'll be good and i saw something move that's a good sign Let's grab some of this and i forgot my bottle and we might end up with spring tails and little worms we might not thing there we go there's a good chunk more different mosses there you go so mosses are basically our plants for the terrarium they'll filter the air remove carbon dioxide from any animals and create oxygen for them the old environment This is trigger pottery. I think the bumblebees made these. Little honey pot. another little patch of dirt that had some little wrigglies in it that I think might be nematodes I'm not sure but also this dirt probably contains eggs from insects since they're burrowing for the winter maybe I don't know I don't really know a whole ton about the life cycle of bugs so I'm gonna dump this whole jar in there and we'll just see what comes out as time goes on and for sealing it I'm gonna try and use this now I haven't used this procedure yet Everything tells me this should work, but I'm not sure if I can light this off the lighter. So most people use pine pitch for, like, they'll go ahead and melt it in a little tin. Um, I like to just light it on fire and then let it drip. So I need a lid. 
Let's see if this will catch off the lighter or not. It's going to make my house smell amazing, too. Because pine pitch is just amazing. So by doing it this way and getting it nice and hot, number one, you're going to catch it on fire. But number two, it's also going to make it flow really easy. Ooh, look at the flames. The house is going to smell like pine smoke. Yay, pine smoke. Alright, so I'll just roll that around in there a little bit. And a little more over here. And that's done. And that's done. And the other upshot to this is it stays really hot. I'm going to work fast now. And dump the bugs in. Get in there, you little barmat. There's a worm. And then we will put the lid on and screw them on tight. Oh, it's nice and hot. I'm so glad that didn't explode. And we've got our terrarium. And yes, it's still raining and we're inside with the tin roofs. Tin roofs are fun. So this is the little terrarium that I made today. It is very cool. There is a pill bug in there that is just having a freaking blast and crawling all over everything. The rest of them are all like, oh, what the crap is going on? So the first question, now that I've put critters in here, um, makes this a vivarium, at least for the moment, um, because there's animal life in here as well as uh, plant life. So naturally what's going to happen is some of the animals are going to die and decay and then the other animals are going to eat the leftovers and use them to further their own existence. Um, I'm not exactly sure and from what I've seen from terrarium people, this is mostly trial and error when it comes to putting bugs in here. But one of the most common bugs is pill bug, also known as a wood louse or if you're from Canada, a potato bug. Um, and I found some other handfuls of dirt too while the camera was off that like I saw a springtail and I saw a couple little um, little tiny worms that kind of look like uh, little tiny worms, nematodes. And so I just went ahead and scooped up a couple handfuls of the dirt from various spots that seem to be teeming with critters and tossed them in there. I'm also counting on eggs being in here. I think I already said that. Um, so with any luck what's going to happen is these mosses and lichens and stuff are going to grow there's probably some little weedy seeds in there that might grow up into plants who knows um the bugs are going to do bug things and as this sits it'll go through various life cycles like um populations of one thing will increase while populations of another thing will decrease this is why moss and lichens make good plant matter now, as far as how do they deal without air, because these guys are in a totally sealed environment right now. They're totally cut off from the world, and they're free of COVID-19. Like, they're good to go. They're all up inside there. Um, so, the plant matter in here, or the vegetative matter, is going to produce oxygen that the little bugs need. And they'll produce, they'll take the oxygen and convert it back to carbon dioxide for the plants so it becomes an ecosystem and as far as what it turns into it's probably not going to end up like this like it's starting um but it'll end up quite different and so i've seen videos on this where a guy has some centipedes and pill bugs and so he'll be like for a couple months centipede population just overruns the entire terrarium and then a couple months later the centipedes all die off because they don't have any food and the pill bug population surges and they just go back and forth like that just like any natural enclosed ecosystem so not too worried about it for now if everything dies then this will be sort of a failed experiment but if we can always start over you just take the lid off the jar and try again um just one other thing oh this rock in here is really heavy and I put it kind of off to the side, so I wanted this oriented like a little more this way. And what happens when I set this jar down, it naturally slopes down to the center of gravity. And since I've got this rock in here, it sort of pulls everything forward. So when I put this up in the window, then basically that rock is going to be leaning towards me. So I've got a nice gentle slope in here, and I can see what's going on at a glance when I look inside. Um, there's also a water cycle that's going to go on in here. So I added just enough water to basically fill in that bottom area underneath the rocks. 
and so that water is going to evaporate it'll condense on the jar and then it'll drip back down the edges into the bottom so it'll just keep recycling and recirculating um, over time this top part should dry out and the bottom part should stay nice and moist so that'll give the bugs just different areas where they can crawl around as far as the unfortunate um, nature of the bugs being trapped in a jar the ones that survive probably aren't going to care their offspring aren't going to care but um, that's just something that goes along with it if you want to see living critters crawling around in there. I've been watching this little pill bug for like an hour. Um, anyways, so that's my little terrarium. Thanks for watching. And uh, this was just another fun little off-grid project. Um, and I forgot something. Uh, sunlight. So the best place to put these guys is in a window or somewhere where they can get natural light. Um, you don't want them, you don't want to cook them. But if they're in an environment like a house, that'll keep the thing pretty much cooled off on the outside while sunlight can get in there too. Because sunlight basically powers this system. You still have to have a power input, and the input for this is sunlight. So we'll put them up in the window, and then we'll check back with this guy in a couple months and see how they're all doing.